All right, so this first test right here is just using the gimbal all stock as it came from the factory. Um, I've just mounted it on the truck kind of loosely using the little uh, rubber spacers or whatever. It's not really solid mounted. You know, it's not perfectly aligned, but right now I think I'm just trying out uh, the difference between the normal mode and FPV mode basically. So I drive it around. You can see the steering is not actually looks like it's I'm going back and forth between locking it uh, so basically I noticed you know just like Chad Rains noticed when you lock it you get real bad jitters uh, when you reach a certain speed I think right now I've unlocked it and you can see that it's pretty smooth uh, but you know it, it tries to uh, tries to stabilize your turns you know again makes it kind of hard to turn right it's manageable, but then you can see, you get up to these higher speeds, you know, you just have this real bad jitter that comes in. So right now, it's actually looking way better than it normally would. Um, so the fact that, you know, I have this jitter is, you know, it's not actually making it worse. It's still making it way easier to drive. I don't have this problem so much on the Typhon because of the tires and it's real smooth. This one, because of the tires, man, it just vibrates so bad, it's just really hard to drive. So, you kind of see more of the shakiness coming up. But this right here on the road looks way better than it normally would. But, you know, like that right there, that's about what it normally looks like, but a lot worse. Um, so, this right here, you know, definitely, this just looks way better. But so this, see this random jitter right there. I mean, that's just, that's me trying to lock the yaw for when I'm turning. So I'm just using an extra button to lock the yaw as I turn. But while it's doing that, you know, and it reaches all that rough uh, terrain, you know, it starts wigging out like this, right? So that's not really acceptable. If you go super slow the whole time, it doesn't seem to be a problem. But I think it's just the reality that, you know, these gimbals, they're only going to be able to do so much. It's pretty amazing what they can do, but you throw in too much crazy vibration and it just cannot keep up. Um, so again, maybe, you know, like new firmware or something will help that out. So now you can sort of see I'm trying to do a little bit more slower crawling up here. And once again, I'm locking the axis. You can see it's just jittering all around. So this, you know, it's not a whole lot better than how it would normally look with it jittering like that, right? You see little bits and pieces of it doing real good. So like technically even going this speed, this looks way better than it normally would. But now you can see that, you know, the jitter sort of picking up again. So, I mean, this is just not really going to work, um, you know, unless you put it on a crawler or something. And even then, you know, you start bouncing around too much again that thing's kind of gonna struggle but you can see it's getting there right i mean it's it's giving you a really big benefit with a little bit of downside in the woods especially you know this type of driving this has it looking way better than it normally would so it's not really bouncing all over the place um but again i'm crawling as soon as i pick up a little bit of speed you know, all that, that, see that crazy jitter comes back. And that just makes it pretty much impossible to drive. I'm just way better off with uh, without using the gimbal. All right. So basically the idea is if I could just lock this yaw axis, if I could just literally just physically lock it to try to keep it from jittering back and forth, uh, this might solve that problem. So I basically end up just using a piece of tape in the next test and um, that's how I lock it but uh, I'd say I still see a little bit of jitter kind of jump through and that's probably because that motor is still trying to jerk the gimbal and it's just being held down by tape so it's probably you're probably still seeing a little bit of micro jitter from that right so I need to work on a better mechanical way to actually lock the axis and uh, that could just be a manual thing that I you know <laughs> I, I release let it boot up and calibrate and then I just lock it down and leave it that way till I'm done driving it right that's really the only solution that I've come up with um, you know aside from waiting for uh, firmware 
Um, so, you know, again, it's really nice having this feature. This looks way better than it normally would, but I can only do it without locking the axis. You can see I almost crashed because it's just hard to steer like that. And then uh, when I do lock the axis, it just looks crazy like this. So I could deal with a little bit of that because normally it's just way too difficult to drive at this speed with these tires. It would just look way too bad. Um, but yeah, that, that, that crazy off-road jitter is just, so long as I can get rid of that, then uh, I'll be happy with it.
All right, so here's basically my solution for this gimbal here to uh, fix the jitter problem. So this, this takes three channels. Before, I just had a regular pan tilt servo setup. Two servos, two channels. Since I needed an extra channel, I sacrificed my flashlight. So the benefit of the previous setup was it was real sturdy servo uh, gimbal setup. I can mount this flashlight on there. Uh, I can also put the side view mirror. All that extra weight really didn't give it a problem. I can't really add weight to the gimbal itself uh, for the stabilizing one, right? But since it had this jitter issue, you can see this is basically what I've done. I've just mounted the whole gimbal itself on a panning servo, right? So I have took the uh, third channel that would normally feed the PWM input for the yaw, and I'm just running that to the servo itself. So there's only the two channels hooked up on here. And uh, luckily, they let you set the software to that. So I have basically disabled the home and the yaw. So all this thing is going to do is stabilize up and down and with the roll, right? And I can also still use the hooked up channel to look up and down right then of course looking left and right is going to be the auxiliary servo right so i wasn't sure if that was going to work it adds a bit of extra pain to the whole deal because you know these wires are really not supposed to be moving around um, so long as you can get your wires right then it shouldn't be a problem so for example Ideally, I would replace these wires, um, all of these wires, you know, except for this one. This one's probably fine, the MIPI cable or whatever. I would replace these with thin, small silicone wire, make it very flexible. Not too worried about it because these are pretty strong servos. Um, I think so long as I take a little bit of care here, these are not going to get destroyed with so much movement. Also, you can see I've just temporarily mounted it using these uh, rubber feet here, so I'm not going to have it so wobbly. I'm going to mount this better, but so far, even just like that, it seems to work, right? The only other thing is, even though you're not feeding the yaw channel, it's still going to try to move around a little bit, and it's also not going to have a home. So unless you disable that home and yaw channel, it's really not going to stay in the same straightforward position uh, as when you calibrated it. Uh, but even when you do that and it looks straight, it's still going to slightly drift because you're, you're not locking the yaw. Uh, you're disabling all of that. So I'm just kind of locking it with a piece of tape right now. That's sort of going to be my bootleg solution. I need to come up with a better way. The problem is every time you start this thing up, it's going to want to go through its little process, right? Where basically if I turn it on, it wants to sort of calibrate, right? So it'll do that every time. So you can see it moving left and right just a little bit. It's not a problem if you just lock it in that straightforward position. So it can't move left and right. With just the extra little headache of having to remember, I'm gonna wanna just, I don't know, like, you know, throw some tape on here or something, right? Uh, otherwise, I'll just have to come up with some little engineer, some quick little assembly here that can quickly lock it down and unlock it. Because um, I'm pretty sure if you leave it locked in while you boot it up, it's going to sit there and try to calibrate and it's just going to get stuck trying to do that forever because it's not able to uh, rotate, right? 